So if you have been working from home for a year and a half, you may be a little rusty on the whole getting up early, getting dressed, the commute not to mention when you head into the office. Elizabeth Pran joins me now. You're going to help us get ready. Not only that, the commute, but also what to do face to face now. It can be pretty awkward. We're out of practice. <laughs> Do, do you do you do a handshake? Do you do an elbow bump, a fist bump? Look, nobody wants the first week to be hard or awkward. So we talk to the experts about how to make the transition as smooth as possible. When it's time to go back to work in person, experts say the transition should begin at least a week ahead. Begin by going to bed sooner and then slowly adjusting your morning alarm, says the sleep doctor, Michael Bruce. So as an example, if you're getting up now at eight, you want to get up at, let's say, 630, it would probably take you six to nine days to move your schedule that way. Go ahead and start moving to get earlier by about a half an hour every two to three days. Dr. Bruce explains that way you won't get cranky because you've shocked your body into a sudden earlier wake up time. Another going back to work reality, that dreaded work commute. Transportation departments around the country say here's one thing that helps keep traffic moving. It's called zipper merge. When traffic is heavy, that one lane can back up fast. Instead, if they just all slow down and drive in both lanes until they get closer to the merge point, then take turns merging into the through lane, kind of like teeth on a zipper. It's a lot safer. I know it feels like you're being rude, like you're cutting in line. But experts say merging late can actually reduce traffic back up by 40%, cause fewer serious crashes, and can reduce road rage because traffic keeps moving. Finally, you've made it to work and you see your coworkers for the first time in a long time. Do we shake hands, bow? What do we do? Etiquette expert Elaine Swan explains how to reduce the awkwardness. Before you even extend your hand, the first thing you should do is ask, are you shaking hands? And if they are, then of course, oblige them and, and shake hands with them. Now, if the person says, I'm not shaking hands, I'm holding off just a little while longer, then move the conversation along. Don't stand there and try to explain yourself and, and explain why you think it's okay or so forth. Pivot and change that conversation and keep it stepping. <laughs> Elaine went on to say polite gestures like holding the door for someone or swinging by their cubicle might need to be on hold for a little while. If you see someone's body language and they're stepping back a little bit, maybe they're not ready. And Susan, I will say I noticed that with Bob when I was in, but I'm thinking maybe I just wasn't wearing deodorant and he was sort of stepping back. So now I know <laughs> just to keep my space around him when I'm in the building. You're a little intimidated. Oh, wow, I gotta be are. honest with you. Yeah, good morning. You're a little intimidated. That's all. So we do the old air fist like that. That's good. Bob is the opposite of a close talker. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, the, the biggest, my thing is, I don't remember who people are. I walk in, yeah. Who the H is this guy? I totally forgot this guy. That's I, my problem. I don't think we ever go back to the to the closeness. Just my guess. Yeah, I think probably. that we should, but maybe an elbow and air. Yeah, but the air, that's what we do nowadays. It's yeah. all good. Back in <laughs> 2021. Yeah. It makes us cool with the kids. Ooh, or so we tell ourselves. <laughs> Elizabeth Bob, thank you. <laughs>